politics and sports, a perfect mix that has never been separated. They don't want to get a nasty tweet from Donald Trump. Do you believe that? Maybe this man was the accelerator for some. I am not in the habit of supporting people who attack my wife and attack my father. Where even this guy weighs in on Major League Baseball's All-Star Game. Policy. Why don't you talk to the president the way you talk to my brother, Ted? <laughs> You afraid of him? You think he'll smack you down at home? I'm talking about the president, the one who called you a liar, the one who said your wife was ugly. Kaepernick writes, there is nothing new about American terrorist attacks against black and brown people for the expansion of American imperialism. Your response? Yeah. Yeah, he's a loser on and off the field. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham follows the MAGA tactics as well. I think it's very disrespectful to our country. I think it's very, very disrespectful to our flag. All of this is by design. The mantra goes as follows. Pick on the athlete for silently protesting while protecting the checks because you see, the ruling class of sports is in bed with those tasked to pass laws. And one of the greatest cons at play in sports? 1.7 million square feet a capacity of about 60,000 screaming fans? That's the plan for the Tennessee Titans' new stadium in the heart of Nashville. It's projected to cost $2.1 billion, and more than half will come directly from taxpayers. The Michigan Strategic Fund has decided to issue $450 million in bonds for a new stadium for the Detroit Red Wings, 44% uh, of which will be financed uh, publicly. Most of the studies will show that they actually end up losing money. It's really a question of political power and influence. And basically football teams attract corporations because the corporate executives get the free boxes and so they like it. Having a stadium, you know, I mean, it may bring some business and residual business, but you know, most people when they go to a, 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 a sports event, they eat at the stadium. They don't, they don't hang out at the restaurants in the downtown area. And so I, I just think that, that this is sort of a, a, you know, sort of a fanciful uh, approach towards economic development instead of building really good jobs. And except for the construction, the jobs created by Stadia are generally low wage, occasional work. All of which is true. And what makes the latest move all the more troubling. Washington Wizards and Capitals owner Ted Leonis is preparing to move his NBA and NHL franchises to a proposed new arena complex and entertainment district in Alexandria, Virginia, sources tell ESPN. Now, after that news came out, later Tuesday, Washington, D.C. Mayor Mario Bowser announced a new bill offering $500 million in financing for a complete renovation and modernization of Capital One Arena, where both teams have played since 1997. Leonis is seeking $600 million in public monies for arena renovations. This was announced on December 13th with Ted sitting alongside MAGA Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin. And I have to say that the work that we've done with my longtime friend Ted, Leo Ted Leonsis has been truly, truly extraordinary and rewarding. To understand how the sausage is made, let's go piece by piece. This is the design those behind the scenes drew up for Alexandria. Ted, monumental sports and entertainment CEO, could see his two teams move as early as 2028 on 70 acres worth of land. We want to build, though, the most fan-friendly experience. We've heard this song and dance too many times at this point from the billionaire class, haven't we? He wanted $600 million in public funds. He's not getting his asking price. And now he's taking his franchises and moving. It is a simple A to B. Via woes, Virginia state lawmakers voted Monday to approve the arena project in Northern Virginia, the Washington Post reported. A final vote of the state's full general assembly is needed to pass the project, which would create an 8 million square foot campus site in Alexandria. This revelation that Ted Leonsis and Monumental Sports are going to move the Wizards out of the city, the NBA, a city sport out of Washington, D.C. to Virginia, that is awful. I'm just hearing about this, the reporting in the Washington Post. You're going to take the city sport out of the city. Turn your back on Washington, D.C. and go to Virginia? Really? What does that say to your fan base that has been loyal despite zero years of contention for that franchise for a championship. Really? David Aldridge, longtime NBA journalist, studio host, and reporter wrote in his column for The Athletic, this is about one man's grandiosity and readiness to leave when the city that has provided him so much over the last decades needed someone with his voice and influence to say post-COVID and post-January 6th, and which is grappling with crime outbursts throughout the city that have so many ill at ease. You know what? Some things may be bad here right now, but I'm blessed enough to be financially secure enough 
enough to ride it out with you. I want to be part of the solution. So I'll be slightly less rich. I'm staying. This week in my hometown, Monumental Sports principal owner Theodore Leontis announced that he wanted to move the Washington Capitals and the Washington Wizards outside of D.C. from Capital One Arena to Alexandria, Virginia. The man sitting to my left is my father, Earl. He's the one that took me to games and taught me how to be a sports fan. And let me tell you something, as a family that grew up in D.C. and understands what that sport basketball means to the city, this is not just villainous, as Tony Kornheiser said, it's despicable. You're going to have to look yourself in the face every day, Theodore, when people start walking away from your team and you're going to know exactly why they did it. Not cool. Ah, never has been, never will. Of course, there are many quotes that age poorly here. In 2018, however, Ted bragged about staying and told the Washington Business Journal, I spent $110 million on renovations since I've owned the building. I could see us spending another $100 million over the coming years or infrastructure and technology right here. My goal, the building is 20 years old. I'd like to get another great 20 years out of it, wrote Candace Buckner. Ted's rapaciousness to become a superpower in sports and forsake any civic responsibilities to a neighborhood at its most vulnerable time along with the district's dawdling, will mortally wound Washington as a major sports hub. Just when Ted and his enterprise could have been part of the solution for a struggling downtown, he's adding to the problem by escaping to the sanitized safety of the burbs. Just to give an idea of where Virginia politics is at, Ted has been after a reluctant D.C. government for $600 million in renovation funds. That is, he would like for the residents of D.C. to pay through the nose to shine up a building that is owned by a billionaire. And this created an opening for Youngkin. Glenn has been hunting a signature development victory so that he can say he's luring new business to his state, even if it costs taxpayers a ton. Recently, he did a whole lurid courtship dance with Dan Snyder in an effort to bring the commanders to the same plot of land. In addition, we also learned via awful announcing that Ted sold a stake in the team's parent company to the Qatari Investment Authority.